Hi, this is Babette Donaldson. I'm the author of the Everything Healthy Tea Book and the founder of the International Tea Sippers Society. And I'm, this is a, a, a video that I'm based on a series of, of presentation slides on the same topic, marketing the health message of tea, that I've used at World Tea Expo and at some of the festivals. I am organizing this now as a, a permanent resource in the library for our Tea Sipper Society business members who are starting to consider how they can better communicate the um, research and the information about tea and health accurately and responsibly to their customers. Now, in our tea history, we have the father of, of ancient Chinese medicine, uh, actually still currently very much a part of traditional Chinese medicine, Shen Nong was a legendary emperor in 2737 BC. He's credited with the discovery not only of tea, but of many different herbs and many different health practices. The one I particularly like is the boiling water that he is said to have traveled around the country, just improving people's health by having them boil water. We also uh, have in our tea history, Bodhidharma, that represents the way in which tea was traveled around the world as part of a spiritual tradition to increase focus and the ability to meditate. So what we're gonna look at today is the fact that there is a vast base of knowledge and information that's available from the scientific community, but that would require a lot of time and energy to process and be able to utilize and talk about, <clears throat> and there would be a certain amount of risk involved in doing so. But it might, in understanding and, and knowing more about the science, help us actually improve our businesses and sell more tea. We might gain more respect in our communities. And it might add to the kind of content that we can use when we blog and write and talk with our communities. So here's a list of some of the chronic diseases that are being researched now um, and have been for the certainly extensively in the last couple of decades. Uh, you'll see, I think you probably have heard a lot about the different cancers and about diabetes and heart disease, but many, many more are coming to the fore. The neurological health, uh, work with dementia and uh, Parkinson's stroke. The, and I think of my, one of my interests is ADHD with kids. Question is, what can we do with this? And it's been my experience that the most popular uh, topics and the ones that I, about which I get the most questions are weight loss, cancer, heart disease, and almost every uh, time I speak, I'm asked to, to explain a little bit more about caffeine and the pros and the cons. And the truth is that as exciting as this research is, as interesting as the results are, because of the limitations of the FDA, at this time, we can't talk about any of these particular conditions. We cannot use any particular disease uh, when we talk about tea. We can't w step over that line of saying that, for instance, green tea cures cancer if we're trying to use it to sell tea. And that's a, that's a, a point that we'll come back to a little bit later. So even though there is a lot of research, this is a website, it's a government website that publishes a huge number, huge amount of, of research. You can use this tool and go to the search bar and put in T and health or T and stroke or T and dementia, and it will help you find the all the articles that have been published. But once again, there's a restriction by the FDA from using any specific disease in your talk about what's healthy about tea. So when we say that uh, there's a big learning curve um, and to discussing the health benefits of tea, it's not that you can't read an article and, and repeat what the article says, but there's an understanding, a depth of it, that getting into the structure and chemistry of the tea leaf itself uh, makes that experience uh, a lot more valuable. For example, is L-theanine. L-theanine is almost unique to tea. 
it is the compound within the tea leaf that makes the usable caffeine uh, less likely to cause jitters like coffee. So you have a more controlled and focused um, energizing effect. And of course, the one con compound in tea that you'll see most often studied in this research is the EGCG, epigallocatechin gallate, is in uh, particularly studied in the green teas. Sometimes it can make you think that green tea is actually healthier than other forms of tea just because there are more research studies. But as you learn more about the gadigans, about the phenols and polyphenols, you get a much richer, deeper understanding. Even if this isn't the language that you want to use in marketing, having that under your belt, having confidence in your own abilities helps you as you have these conversations with uh, friends and with customers. But it's the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, that controls what we can say and what we cannot say about the health benefits of our food. They, there are actually four categories of claims that they evaluate. And when you, we feel that there is enough research, we, we file a petition to be able to change the language on our labeling, and they review the research and either accept or deny it. And of course, they deal with violations, some of which um, can just be a warning, but others can involve ch dramatic changes in, in not just claims that you make on your website that are you can quickly get somebody to readjust the text, but what about the labels on products that are product might have to be recalled? It can be very time consuming and very expensive. So there's this enormous amount of, of of information, but there's a learning curve, there's staying current, and then there's also training staff. Uh, because if you, if you start to take the marketing tactic that says that your business is uh, more invested in tea as a health product, you have to make sure that the people that work for you know how to discuss this. So the third problem that I'm pointing out, in addition to the regulations by FDA and the effort that it takes to stay current and educated and educate your staff, is that the exaggeration in the media and the hype can make the health benefits of tea sound like too much of a good thing. To, to make the point about hype, there is a, an ad by Yorkshire Tea that's called the Tea Song. It's on YouTube, and you should really listen to it. It kind of takes uh, a, a little bit of a, a spoof attitude on uh, the hyperbole that around all the different things that tea can cure. So the uh, I think what we want to be careful about is that we want to make sure that we stay really well grounded whenever we use any health message about tea. And to be clear, what the Food and Drug Administration controls when we say label is almost everything, any claim, not just on the, the actual packaging, but on the, the shelf talkers that you might put up um, as you display your teas, but also on your website and in any brochures that you produce, that you have printed. This article from World Tea News in 2011 talks about the uh, Rishi's uh, response when the FDA um, filed a complaint against some of the language that they used. You can still see this online. And this is an article from BBC News that makes another point um, that one of the complaints that was filed against a tea company was the result of a, a, a report by a competitor that called them to task. So if, if we can't use disease to discuss the health benefits, you know, if we can't talk about heart disease or cancer, how can we use health to sell tea? So we can broaden the, our ideas about health. We've been doing this in many ways, um, in the la especially in the last 10 to 15 years. And tea has always sort of represented this coming together uh, in times of, of distress and 
uh, it's a, you know, as a family gathering. And so there are many non-disease issues that can be addressed just by the way in which tea cre helps us create a community, can address family crises, can speak to the issues of loneliness and isolation. I think tea has a voice in that. And the way that people feel overwhelmed in how we deal with some of the new influences that technology is having on our lives and in stress. We know that stress contributes a lot to almost all of our health issues uh, and exacerbates many different conditions. So once again, a lot of people just, this is an assumption that we make in modern life. But I'm provided this quote from Phyllis Balch uh, that actually speaks to the fact that it's associated with some specific disorders like diabetes, arthritis, cancer, and osteoporosis, Alzheimer's, periodontal disease, and cardiovascular disease. So in the sense that we see um, uh, T research paralleling this research that's done in, on stress, we can talk about T using tea as a mindfulness practice, using tea in meditation, using tea as a way to take a break from the stress of daily living, and a very, as a very positive health message. We can also talk about tea as an alternative beverage to things that aren't very healthy. When now we're trying to get children off of sodas, and many people are trying to reduce the amount of coffee that they drink, teas are a great alternative. So I call this the healthy lifestyle. Tea takes us into a healthy lifestyle. The top image uh, in here is at the LA Tea Festival, the first LA Tea Festival, when hundreds and hundreds of people came together to share what we f can experience with brewed tea. And of course, tea's always been um, a children's uh, activity but now it's becoming more of a family activity. We say it's multi-generational for all ages. So where can we put these um, messages that can actually help initiate conversations? And a little bit of everywhere. It's language that can be worked into um, your signage, into your website, into a blog, if you have a blog, into your newsletter. You can, if you have a brick and mortar store, you can keep a bookshelf that has the, some of the latest titles that your customers can browse. So in your product descriptions, one of the, the tricks you can do is to list all of your ingredients very thoroughly. You can include information about the season of harvest, where it was grown, information about the, the grower, what they do for the soils and for the workers on their farms to have a, create a more sustainable environment. Consider freshness and quality some of the uh, con main contributors to tea being very healthy. Focus on the flavors and n things that are associated with positive feelings and help the customer come up with their own personal flavor profile. A few ideas about your website. Go to an extensive um, description in your About Me page that gives something about your personal beliefs or your investment in your own, own health and that connect this with your reason for being in the tea business. You can refer to other resources, other books, the bloggers, different associations, and you can include some material. I mean, you can actually include some books in your inventory for your online sales or in your shop so that you give your customers these resources right in their own hands. On social media, you can post your own educational experiences. You can repost articles about tea and health, but be sure to choose ones that are from very competent, reliable, and trusted sources. The same is true about retreating, retweeting articles. You can actually do some research and write your own articles to, that can be published on teaching or with the Tea Sipper Society. You can include tea and health interests in all your social media profiles. Uh, for example, that this is perhaps, this might be one of the reasons that uh, you were first attracted to having a tea business. 
and you can review books on uh, different sources of tea and health. Uh, you can post these on Am even on Amazon.com, and oftentimes you can list the name of your business, your your name and the name of your business, so it actually becomes a little bit of advertising for you. So this is an ad I found, and please don't do this. These are all sorts of wild and outlandish claims that are just over the top and not proven. It doesn't prevent food poisoning. It doesn't prevent diabetes. It uh, doesn't totally maintain a healthy circulatory system. It contributes to health in many ways like this, but you, you have to mitigate what you're saying so that you continue to sound credible and not like you're trying to put, promote your own scam with tea. So is, is the health message your cup of tea? If it is, you're not alone. We actually have some incredible partnerships, and there's a lot of power to these partnerships. So when I say partnerships, I also mean resources. And the tea associations around the world uh, all produce websites uh, that, that share in the kind of information that promotes tea and health. And you can be, become members of these different associations that support medical research. There's mainstream media, there are authors and bloggers, uh, and you can find local experts in your own neck of the woods in your own local area. The UST Association uh, runs is partnering, I think, with Canada to run an international scientific symposium, and the they also invested a lot of money at one point to run a contest called Kalma Sutra, where they had people submit videos of explaining the different health benefits, and there was a big prize. But they really got uh, dozens of videos up on YouTube that were carried that message. And a lot of them are still up. I think if you do a search on YouTube, you'll still find several of them. The Canadian Tea, Asso Tea and Herbal Association uh, promotes their own articles on tea and health, as does the Sri Lankan uh, Tea Association and many, many others around the world. And then, of course, in addition to my own book, Maria Yaspensky recently published Cancer Hates Tea based on her, her own experiences with cancer and how the role that tea played in, in her recovery. So here's um, my suggestion that you can partner with experts in other fields. You can have tea and uh, yoga front, yoga events, for instance, a mind, tea and mindfulness in a, um, with meditation instructors. You can work with herbalists. Now, at the top of my list, I put dentist. There's actually a dentist that, be, her name was Lindy Lane, that started a tea business in Dixon, California. And she actually put out a line of, of products that promoted good oral health in connection with what she was doing with her tea business. But you'll also find that estheticians are using tea and skin care and that health spas are looking toward uh, to fixing, creating some of their own unique blends. These are the kind of partnerships that serve both parties very well. So I said mass media is supporting our efforts to educate the public on the health benefits of tea. We've got Oprah. We've got Dr. Oz. And we've actually got, also got Dr. Andrew Vile. What about Kermit the Frog? We have so many people that are putting the message out there that tea is healthy, that the convincing part of it has been done. And people come to us already with something in mind that they, uh, with a belief system that they want to add this into their life. So in a sense, we don't have to take that risk. We don't have to reach out to um, make a lot of claims because all we can do is respond to a belief system that the media has helped us build into um, into our future customers. And so like Jim, Joe Sim Rainey said, uh, you know, I said back at the beginning of this presentation, when he was hired by the UST Association 
to be able to respond to the demands of a uh, um, for tea once the FDA allowed us to make these claims, I think that at that point they had no idea how much the mass media would do that job way before, far be, you know, long before the FDA allows us to make any of those kinds of claims. So the last thing that I'm going to bring up to consider today in, in how you develop your marketing strategy around the health benefits of tea is to consider your own experience and your own expertise. As I mentioned, Lindy Lane was a dentist who brought this her her professional life into her tea life and saw the way in which they work together. We have many kinds of health uh, professionals that come into tea for one reason or another. Also, you're going to have people on your staff that that may add to uh, what you can offer. You may have someone who's an herbalist for instance, that might contribute to your blends. But the bottom line is the bottom line. How much is it really going to uh, benefit your, your profitability, your income? How much do your customers care? And one community to the next is going to vary greatly. Um, I find, for instance, that people in, in uh, say, a college town where they might have a younger audience get a lot more questions about uh, tea and health and caffeine, whereas uh, people that are in a, maybe a retirement community, the conversations there would be much different. You have to really know wh what your community wants and needs to know how you can meet those needs. So one last question. Are we now depending less on the health benefits of tea to actually sell more tea? I mentioned uh, once again the time where the U.S. Tea Association and many of us were convinced that this message was what we really needed to bring to the public. We really had an obligation to bring it forward. And I remember then some people saying, gee, it's too bad that we can't, uh, that, that we feel that we need to, to do this. What if we could just... Uh, share the experience of the flavor and the beauty of the leaf and the experience of cultures around the world. And I'm wondering if now the, the, uh, the acceptance of tea as a healthy beverage has reached that critical point where we can start to talk about the other elements of tea that in some ways might be a lot more interesting. Though I don't know that we're ever going to get away from needing to know and understand it. And I think we're always going to want to be moving forward with more research and, um, you know, more ways in which we are ironically trying to prove with our modern technology what people have been believing for thousands of years. So I thank you very much that you shared this time with me and I hope you got something out of this little overview of marketing tea and health. I hope you join us for the next in the series that uh, continuing the discussion of marketing tea and health with 25 specific tips. We started that a little bit in this presentation, but we're going to drill down a more deeply with tips that you can use, that you can implement in your business immediately. Take good care. Bye-bye.